In 2011, Bethesda humbly laid to our feet the most incredibly well-crafted RPG ever made. Skyrim is universally critically acclaimed, a flawless masterpiece. Anyone who disliked this game was subject to one of two possible circumstances. One, ridicule. Everyone you know now thinks you're a blithering idiot and you have disappointed your parents. Or two, Todd Howard himself showed up at your door and killed you in your sleep. On release, the game was revered for allowing you to do anything. You could be a big burly man with a big burly sword. With the big burly peen, you could be a wizard hurling spells, an illusionist, a conjurer. But what if what you wanted to do was nothing? What if what you wanted to do was complete the game without playing it? By making Skyrim play itself without your input? Surely Todd would not allow this. Surely not in his Skyrim. I spawn in on a day like any other, accosted for trying to cross the border without papers. An Imperial officer tells us to identify ourselves. And then we stand there for an hour melding into various different shapes like the eldritch horror Todd always wanted us to be. Hadvar asks for our name. <gasps> What? Just kidding. His name is Manny Manny Mark Orpur Bobney. This man in a skirt is going to execute Ulfric Stormcloak. And Rayloff is smiling because Todd programmed him incorrectly as a joke. Suddenly, Dragon. But you didn't come here to see the intro. You came here to see Hadfar uncuff this disheveled man and unleash his dominance. Sorry, unleash nothing on the world. Hadvar wants me to help him get past these Stormcloaks, but instead I do nothing and watch on as he gets the snot kicked out of him. I watched this battle for a long time expecting someone to win, but I soon come to the realization that Hadvar is locked in some kind of sick, twisted, unending battle, so I slip past and leave him there, locked in conflict for all of eternity. I bravely run past these guards and do not panic at all. Big spiders, I'm not going to fight these spiders, I will do nothing. Big bear, I'm not going to fight this bear, I will do nothing. I end up escaping to the outdoors and I immediately encounter a bug whereby the game won't check off that I've escaped Helgen, ending the tutorial. Encountering a bug immediately after the tutorial, 15 minutes into the game, is the most Bethesda thing I have ever experienced. I wait for a few hours and in typical Skyrim fashion with no rhyme or reason, it just unfucks itself. I activate the mage stone because I'm the greatest mage who has ever existed and you'll soon find out why. In Riverwood, Sven asks me to help him cuck Feindal by convincing Camilla to break up with him. But Manny is a good old man who unsubscribed from the cucking long ago. So I go to snitch on Sven to Camille but I get roped into finding the Golden Claw. They must think I'm a capable fellow. I tell Camille that Sven is a naughty horny boy who needs the bunk, and I place a basket over Lucan's head so he can't see me rob him blind. I try to pickpocket him as well, but instead of slipping my fingers into his pocket, they accidentally slip into his ass. Once outside, I recruit Camille because I'm using a mod that allows me to recruit almost anyone. I mean, because I'm the greatest mage of all time and my power is recruiting people against their will. I mean, it's only one mod, surely that's not going to break the game, right? Right? I equip Camille with the armor that I stole from her brother Lucan, and watch as she defends me from a bandit. Manny is angry. Violence isn't the answer. But despite my grievances, I will do nothing. Because I prevented him from being cucked, Feindal allows me to take everything he owns. I then also recruit him as a follower. You see, I'll need him for his flesh. He and Camille will become meaty shields to protect me from violence. And do all the doing so that Manny can do nothing. Without them, I will be doing something and doing something is not good. I complete the trifecta of reverse cucking and I recruit Sven's granny Hilda and travel with my ragtag team of literally useless villagers up the snowy mountains. I ask the granny to fight this one bandit, but she runs up to him and then runs away. It just works. Once at Bleak Falls Barrow, where I'll find the Golden Claw, Hilda cowers and I stand there silently, a stoic witness, a watchful protector. Hilda does this again and her frail geriatric skull gets bashed by this one bandit a handful of times. Camille then kicks the shit out of this bandit, and all the damages done to Hilda have caused her to shed her mortal shackles and become the ghost warrior spirit she was born to be. We part ways because this frightens me. Though this may have been a mistake in hindsight because Feindal cannot even seem to reliably hit a stationary target. I'll see you in pieces. I wait patiently while Feindal fights off a giant spider. Just like in real life, I love doing nothing. Doing nothing is great. I free Arvel, but he decides to run on ahead while I watch on. He gets ganked by some skelly boys, and I discover a great instrument of death by which I can do nothing and destroy all in my path. The AAA quality experience means this goes swimmingly. My genius is unfounded, my stoicism unmatched. <laughs> my spleen. I cannot express enough that this is how I dealt with the entire dungeon. I do nothing and watch Feindal defeat the Draga Deathlord, loot the Dragonstone and make my way out. Back in Riverwood, I see that Hilda has reclaimed her corporeal flesh. Well, look at you. If only everyone acted like you did. Hand the Golden Claw back to Lucan and head to Whiterun. By this point, you're probably wondering how this playthrough will work. 
Well, me too. Especially considering how incompetent my followers are. For example, they are not assisting the companions in defeating this giant. Neither am I, but that's that's besides the point. I am just a frail old man. I've paid my taxes, dammit. It's time for society to support me. So I recruit some Whiterun guards to the cause. Ignoring that I owe them a bounty for that one time I stuck my fingers up Lucan's ass. They seem to have no problems following me. Heimsker? You have come. You have come. He tells me that I have come. I have. So I recruit this warrior too. I am recognized for my incredible skills. Very credible. This small child begs for money, so instead of handing her money, she too gets recruited. After all, you give a man a fish, he eats for a day. But if you employ a small child and hand her a weapon, then she eats for... She, she eats for more days. In fact, she's so happy to be employed, she asked me to be her daddy. Brenuin, the homeless man, also joins the cause. And the last, to complete the fellowship. The final piece of the puzzle. The ying to my yang. If my yang were a literal piece of dog shit. Do you get to the cloud district very often? Very often. Very often. Very often. This man is immense. I am truly gifted to have this man at my side. During a time where half my companions unashamedly flee from battle. Of course, the dragon falls to my fellowship of villagers. And small child laborer. There's a lot to unpack in this scene, I know. Also, I'm dragonborn through no effort of my own. It was probably all Nazim. Do you get to the cloud district very often? Oh, what am I saying? Of course you do. I allow him to berate me because the very fabrics of reality effortlessly bend to his will. Observe. Nazim goes to the cloud district. Shit. It was a dark day as it turned out. The giants wiped out almost everyone. But at least these three letters of inheritance give me 1200 gold coins. Also, apparently Feindal died twice. The greatest curse that comes with being a man who does nothing is that I cannot do anything to progress the way that I want. Progress must come naturally. I am bound to never thread the weaves of fate myself. So I'll have to get stronger companions to weave it for me. Thusly, I release this hungry child for my service. Yes, I too absolutely shit myself when I misclick that button. I release this homeless man. I release Heimsker. He who could tell that I came that one time. And I recruit Lydia. Because she has sworn to carry my burdens. And my burdens are great. Also, she's not a child or homeless, so that helps. I go to the tavern to recruit this lady because I need more powerful companions so that I can more comfortably do nothing. But she kicks the ever-loving geriatric shit out of me. Which leaves me convulsing on the floor. The innkeep watches on in horror. In disgrace. I leave Whiterun to seek out the Greybeards, and encounter a group of thugs hired to finish me off. I suspect the person responsible is that tough lady who kicked the ever-loving geriatric shit out of me, but I can't be sure. All I can do for now is vacantly watch on, doing nothing, while my entourage of Lydia and several Whiterun guards slaughter my assailants. Many, many Mark Orpel Dorpel is too important. A man of this stoicism is like the messiah to these people. The pilgrimage up to the Temple of the Greybeards is a long and arduous one. Wrought with many trials of both strength and cunning. We get revenge for the fallen. The giants don't stand a chance. My new regiment of exclusively white-run guards helmed by the mighty Lydia is more than a match for these two giants. Disrespect the law and you disrespect me. I pay my respects to the fallen for those who die allow this man who does nothing to live on. Used to be an adventurer like you. And I took an arrow in the knee. I love this game. The further we travel, the more casualties we suffer. But suffer on we must. Over the hills and the paths of the wilderness. Up the stairs built by ancient civilizations past. Through the tombs of the living dead. I watch on doing nothing. Allowing Todd's infinitely re-released creation to play itself without much if any input from me at all. There are times when an enemy will get handsy and try to do damage to me instead of my much more threatening entourage of angry town guards. But the efforts are fruitless because I just heal myself. Because why wouldn't I, Todd? You can't stop me. Look what I'm doing to your game. The road continues. My troops kill more while I stand and scowl menacingly without action. And I begin my ascent up the thousand steps to High Hrothgar. Not without resistance though. The local fauna is completely outclassed by the horde of autistic guards with me. All of whom stare at me, in awe, at the man who does nothing. Will he blink? Will he speak? Who knows? 
The greybeards say some cryptic shit to me, but I am too distracted by the white run guard who begins to pray to me. And as quickly as I arrive, I leave to get the horn of Jurgen Windcaller and safely traverse the path back down the mountain. Back in White Run, I am ambushed by these people who claim to want to kill the Dragonborn, but they are wrong. Everyone knows that the Dragonborn was Nazim. I hide atop a roof while the conflict resolves, completely without my input, and I begin to think that perhaps having my own personal militia is going to make my job of doing absolutely nothing too easy. So I climb this mountain to have the local neighborhood watch fight this dragon. But how does this dragon not completely obliterate these people with relative ease like they normally would do? Well, you see, when I initially started the game, I set the difficulty to maximum, which is the legendary difficulty. This is supposed to make everything have more health and deal more damage, which makes the game harder. Except it doesn't, because Todd allows this difficulty setting to also apply to the strength of your followers. And I came to this realization as I absorbed the dragon's soul without having done so much as a single point of damage to it. My team is too powerful. I release my Whiterun guards. From now on, it will just be me, my fire Atronach, and the objectively perfect wife, Lydia. Although this seems to upset them greatly because on returning to Whiterun, the entire town guard decides that Money Money Blinkledink has to die. They also decide that the tough lady who beat the shit out of me also has to die. But this is okay because I take all of her gear and give it to Lydia. I ride back to Riverwood to meet with Delphine so that I can continue the main quest. But on arrival, she too decides that I have to die. I am running one mod, what the fuck? Eventually I come to the realization that there must be a conflict between the version of Skyrim I'm running and the patch that Todd released so that the game now runs on pregnancy test screens. So I leave town, rest somewhere for a week, and return to find the game had decided to function correctly again. Delphine sends me to fight some dragon, and by me she means Lydia. So instead I get Lydia to attack her and I take all of her things. We head over to Kynes Grove and Alduin starts to revive a dragon due to plot point from 11 years ago. And I do a lot of things to make sure the battle goes smoothly, as you can see. And Lydia slays the dragon, proving that she is the dragonborn and I'm just here along for the ride. We head back to Riverwood, but Lydia isn't equipping the gear with good enchantments on it. So I do some menu management and she ends up changing, and also deleting the plate armor she was wearing. Todd is doing all he can to derail my playthrough. I head back to the inn, and because Delphine is based in Red Pill, she wants to blame the dragon revival on the Thalmor because they're elves. Even though we literally just saw Alduin do it. But who'd have known that praising Talos makes you like this? Just look at Heimsker. He ain't right either. What? Why? Why is he doing this? This game has received continuous updates for 11 years. A bandit is attacking my horse. Lydia is not hostile to the bandit. Why? My horse clips into the ground. Why is Skyrim the way it is? My playthrough was going slow. Legendary difficulty meant that every enemy had massive pools of health and that meant that Lydia did too. Her damage was starting to fall behind as well. So I go on a massive journey to collect the materials I need to enchant her the best possible set of armor. But I am trash at enchanting and trash at alchemy. And ain't nobody got time for that. So I craft a potion of enchanting. Chug it. Then enchant some gear for alchemy. Then wear that gear to make a better potion of enchanting. Chug it. Then enchant some gear for alchemy. Then wear that gear and make a better potion of enchanting. Chug it. Then enchant some gear for alchemy. Then wear that gear and make a better potion of enchanting. Chug it. Steadily, this means I max out on how much the enchantment potions buff me. And all this potion required is some blue butterfly wings and snowberries. And the best thing about this journey is that it wasn't a complete waste of time because I could do nothing while Lydia single-handedly slayed this dragon. It was a good day. At last, I enchant the gear that would clad this luscious house Carl lady. Buffed two-handed attack damage. Buffed health bonuses. The great boons of the gods. These stat points are the ambrosia that doth verily buff this maiden to allow money many mongo bongos the freedom to just stand there and do nothing in battle. Look at her there, glowing in all of her splendor. Now prepared, we move onwards. The Greybeards teach me some stuff I will never use. And truth be told, I don't think I was even present for this cutscene. Neither was Manny. Delphine wants us to sneak into the Thalmor Embassy because she is 4chan cringe-pilled. Still thinks it's the elves who did it, but doesn't think we can go dressed up like this. You can't go to a party at the Thalmor Embassy dressed like that. You can't go to a party at the Thalmor Embassy. I calmly infiltrate the Embassy to collect the documents we need. Hilariously enough, we find no evidence that the High Elves had anything to do with it. But she just doesn't shut up the big cow, God. She sends me to go find some homeless guy called Esburn who literally lives in a sewer somewhere. Really painting a good picture here. The company you keep. But there's something I must first work on. 
That task I have to do is not this. I travel to Riften because nearby there is a skooma den inhabited by vampires, in which is a special little book that'll teach you the spell, Telekinesis. This spell normally allows you to grab items from farther away than you could normally grab them, but this isn't the reason we want this. I've installed another mod. You see, I can't afford to be taking a single hit anymore because I instantly die of old age related issues. I need to be able to throw Lydia into battle like a Pokemon. And the Ratway where Esburn is located is a dangerous place. This is no time to be seated on ceremony, Lydia. Come on now, we've got places to be. I locate Esburn and we are ambushed in the sewers. Lydia, I choose you. And I do nothing while my team kill the Thalmor and then murder this small homeless woman in cold blood for some reason. We emerge from the sewers and the journey continues as normal. But Esburn has lived in the dung for years, so I bathe and baptize this walking petri dish before we leave Riften. Telekinesis is the greatest spell in all of the Elder Scrolls games. I return Esburn to Riverwood and escort him into Delphine's dank basement in the inn, where we discuss the ongoing hostilities like the rest of the great warriors. With no input from Delphine, we decide to travel to Kartspire. As it turns out, Esburn is okay. He's not mid-pilled like Delphas. Come on now, Lydia. This is no time to be looking at a table. We're leaving. We say our goodbyes and depart. You too, Delphine. You'll be safe. The road to Alduin's wall is rich with the horrors any outdoor expedition has. Things to do. Fortunately, Lydia does them all for me, and I profit. Carthspire is a pretty dangerous place, so I ask Esburn to go in first. But this seems to break his AI, so I ask him to go in again. Hopefully so he does something this time. We dispatch the Forsworn who have taken camp here, and appropriate their equipment for purposes none other than vanity, and travel further into the ruins. The area is booby-trapped, and because I can do nothing, Esburn volunteers to go first to get the lay of the room. At the end, I perform a ritual and Lydia goes and does some scouting. No, I am never going to stop using the spell, it's too good. Esburn gives us a long explanation based on cave writings, why we have to do the things we have to do to do the next, that someone else is going to do anyway. Obviously, I don't listen because I've done this maybe 10 times, but I'll give you a quick rundown before I start throwing more people around using telekinesis. Basically, we need to learn how to defeat Alduin, but he is too strong to be defeated the way we have been defeating the other dragons. So I climb a mountain and meet with the leader of the Greybeards, Parthenax, who as a dragon laments his evil nature and now lives in quiet solitude at the throat of the world, at times teaching the Greybeards dragon words of power. I throw this goat off the mountain. Parthenax teaches us that many years ago Alduin was defeated by a shout called Dragonrend, created by the Dragonborns of old, in order to cripple him. However, they still couldn't defeat him, so they sent him forward in time to now. It's a pity really, because if Lydia or Nazim were there, Alduin would be mushed and banned from the Cloud District. Anyway, the location from which Alduin was sent forward in time is a ripple in time at the top of this mountain, and to learn the shout from the ancient Dragonborn, we must bring an Elder Scroll to this location, because reasons. And this is where my journey gets pretty weird. I travel north with Lydia to find the location of the Elder Scroll. Lydia fights these ice wraiths in my defense. And this is for some reason the very last time I see her. Perhaps she'd had enough of me watching her do everything. Perhaps she went on vacation. Perhaps she's dead. Perhaps she doesn't like Skyrim so Todd had her killed in her sleep. Anyway, my point is that this is not really good because Monji Monji Mingle Schnob is so weak he can die to a single arrow. I even enter the cave that leads to the ancient ruin where I can find the Elder Scroll and then stand there silently for 24 hours hoping she'd turn up. But Lydia still does not arrive. She is well and truly gone, so I continue on carefully. Every little noise, every murmur of activity is terrifying for Mongi Bongi Bumbleblog. Every battle can now only be fought by my flame atronach, which isn't all that bad, I just have to stand there and do nothing, and that's what my entire strategy has been this whole time, and it's not that bad at all. However, that is not the case because Todd has emailed the Dwemer contraptions to spawn in on me and stab me. He is doing everything he can to make me play the game, and I, I refuse. I was going to need to use my brains more than I ever had, and I can assure you I don't, I don't have much of those. Further into the ruins is this terrifying monstrosity, the Dwemer Centurion, and there was absolutely no way my Atronarch was going to be able to take this guy. So I used my intelligence to lure this big dum-dum into the previous chamber where there was a trap. But he was so big, very strong, lots of healths. I need lure Centurion on contraption many times. Use brain. Calculus, geometry, snarling at bad guy with prejudice.
Okay, big brain time is over. I'd been playing this playthrough for so long I could feel the fabric of reality beginning to break down. Psychosis began to set in. I don't know if I was seeing things or if things were seeing me and deliberately trying to mock me. Lydia was gone and every battle took a thousand years. And all I could do is watch. But that's my strategy, so it's fine. I would watch as Skyrim versus Skyrim. This dungeon was so large and familiar and yet I was so lost I couldn't tell if my quest markers were wrong or if I had totally forgotten the layout of the area. At this point I couldn't tell if I was playing Skyrim or if Skyrim was playing me. I eventually find the chambers and gaze knowingly at the ancient contraption. Wisdom of the ancients was soon to be mine. I press button and win prize. The history books tell of the moth priests of the cult of the ancestor moth who would go blind from studying the Elder Scrolls. Magical artifacts of untold power. But what good is eyesight when all you do is nothing? When your entire adventure is being played by Skyrim and not even yourself. Oh. I learned nothing. Did I do it wrong? I'll try again. Oh. I return to the throat of the world and our friend Parthenax, but this time sadly without Lydia. And I'm sure Parthenax is trying to explain something useful to me, but I read the scroll again before he could finish speaking and I see visions of the past. Oh. Seeing this lady get eaten and this old guy with a scroll get cooked teaches me the dragon wren shout. Finally we are making progress. Now I just have to hatch a plan to find Alduin. And, and he's right here. This is awkward. My Atronarch and Parthenax bravely fight, but they are too weak to do much against him. And that's when it happens. The return of the prodigal daughter. She's back, baby, and she's carrying my burdens. She's she's soloing him. Look at it go. The world eater brought to bear by the extreme skill showcased by Lydia's three attack animations with that axe of hers. Alduin is beaten, but not defeated, and retreats to Sovngarde, which is the afterlife of the Nords. And Uber charges too much for trips out that way. So we hatch a plan to catch a dragon who will charge us less. Which means we have to use Dragon's Reach at Whiterun, a place built to capture dragons. I arrive and greet the Jarl's son. Another wanderer, here to lick my father's boots. Good job. The Jarl courteously agrees to meet me in the dead of the night, but refuses to allow me to use Dragon Reach due to the Civil War. So we are tasked with finding General Tullius and Jarl Ulfric to set up a truce negotiation. What could go wrong? Tullius is chilled with the meeting and Ulfric is chilled with the meeting. Galmar is super chilled at the meeting, so I try to take him with me. But taking him with me is illegal, so I pay a fine and get teleported across the courtyard. And Lydia gets ragdolled by Ulfric. Boy, I hope he's still okay with the truce talk. Think that I would sit down at the same table with that. Thou more bitch. Okay, I'll have to make it up to him. I am a master negotiator. With the truce agreed. Delph Peen tells me to kill Parthenax, because Parthenax is not a white person. Even though he brought to us the knowledge on how best to kill dragons, she's an imbecile. We return to Dragon's Reach at Whiterun and prepare to spring the trap. Money Man Monkey calls the dragon's name and we wait. This was your crazy idea, huh? It goes swimmingly. Lydia does all the work and gets the dragon captured. And we agree that this is all a misunderstanding and if we'd just provided the correct address he would have pulled up outside at the right location and taken us to Alduin from there. Now, we've encountered a problem. Odaving will take only me up to the portal that leads to Sovngarde and Alduin. Because girls are not allowed. This is a problem because I am a frail old man who dies in one hit, does nothing in combat, and I need Lydia because she is my life support. I feel like I've really driven that point home by now. I am embarrassed by how hard easy this segment is and how short it took for me to get from one point to the other without doing anything. Fucking two dragons spawn like 15 Draugr and further on is this dragon priest all in this little stretch from the start of the area to the end and none of them could even get a hit in. You're supposed to fight the dragon priest because without doing so you can't activate the portal which he deactivates. At least that's what I would say if I were a slow old man. But I am so virile that I jump into the portal like a psychopath before the priest can even deactivate it. Now this is where the lore gets hazy. It is entirely possible that I died for good and now I am in the afterlife. And the portal was just some dementia I made up in my mind. Old mate here won't let me into Shaw's Hall of deceased heroes without first trialing me in combat. This is easy and I don't panic at all because I am a virile man. I give him the bamboozle and run past. But then Todd makes my cardio give me a heart attack. Skyrim is trying to play me. 
but I'll play Skyrim by making Skyrim play itself, damn it. I run up the river and soon follows me, but his big meaty head doesn't have a brain, so he gets caught in the rapids that he's had literally an eternity to learn about and falls to his death. Outplayed, or should I say, out nothinged. I make my way into Shaw's Hall and I meet all of Skyrim's legendary heroes. I conduct myself accordingly. We hatch a plan to four-way Alduin, but they don't realize that they will be three-waying him. And the time comes. The time comes to see how Skyrim completes itself with minimal input from me. I say minimal because for some reason, despite these three knowing the Dragon Wren shout, none of them ever use it. So it falls to me to cripple Alduin for my buddy pals to get wacky him. They thought it was going to be Skyrim and Skyrim and Skyrim and me versus Skyrim, but it's only Skyrim and Skyrim and Skyrim versus Skyrim. Now this is pod racing. I stand here while literal comets come crashing down. But this dance gives me an idea. Remember that guy I tricked into falling down the waterfall to his death? Well, he swam back up and he's normally just standing right here. Obviously inspired to do nothing by Manny Manny Bingo Bango. But if I use him as a meat shield and he gets hit, he molds at Alduin, bringing in a fourth player. So now it's Skyrim and Skyrim and Skyrim and Skyrim versus Skyrim. Alduin gets to zero health. Something happens, and he immediately jumps back to full health. Todd is here, I know it. And he doesn't want it to end like this. He doesn't want Skyrim to play itself. We go again. He gets to half health, and I stand there extremely. Tensions are high. We get him again to zero health, but again, nothing happens. I try everything. The passive damage from my Atronarch doesn't do anything. The followers don't do anything. They just, they just stand there shouting. Alduin doesn't do anything. Is this it? Was this Todd's final gambit? He spent so long telling us to play the game that it wasn't possible to simply let it play itself. Is it not possible to not play Skyrim? To be roadblocked right at the end in this manner? To be forced to deal the final blow, just so that he could point at me and say, Ha! I've done it again. I thought I could get away with not playing Skyrim again, but he's too powerful. I punch my old man fist into the world eater and it's done. I failed. I dealt one point of damage. I played Skyrim not by doing nothing, but by doing something. Perhaps we're doomed to this fate, to live in a world where Todd Howard's pantheon of limitless Skyrim re-releases reigns supreme. You play it on your PC, your phone, on your deathbed on the hospital heart rate monitor, with no escape, with no release. And if I can't play it without not playing it, then at least I dared to dream.